hand, I've also never flown so far away from home. And the runway was, uh, we call it a soft field. So it was gravel. And of course it's winter. And I did most of my flying in the summer. Yeah, the landing was a little bit hard, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it was good. It was a great experience. I was a teenager, my dad, uh, he had four daughters and he was always a strong believer that we could do anything that we wanted to do. And so um, I was just a kid. I don't even think I had my driver's license. And I said I wanted to fly a plane. So he took me up. Um, we went down to the local flight school and we had a, a discovery flight and I fell in love with it. So I, I focus my work in the northern Manitoba and it is very geographically isolated. Um, you can ship things on, on trucks, which is much more economical, but still quite pricey because it's, it's vast um, distances that we're traveling. So, and then, and you think about shipping costs. So you have an issue with uh, the price of getting foods into the communities, but then you also have a lack of economic opportunity in, in a lot of these communities because there's just not a lot of industry. can't get large-scale agriculture you can't you don't just have like the major touchstone industries that you do in the south so what you have then is a situation with um, lack of access to healthy foods but then what what healthy foods do get into the communities astronomically priced so you're looking at thirty dollars for a, a jug of juice um, ten to fifteen dollars for a head of lettuce which is absurd completely derailed my life and I stopped flying and uh, eventually now that I'm in my 30s I just got the license to honor his memory and that's kind of what this flight was about. But it feels abstract uh, on the best of days because you're sitting at a desk in the south um, trying to develop policy or programming around food insecurity in the north and so um, this flight uh, was a way for me to kind of get down to the community level and make some tangible difference. So it's almost like, yes, the state is culpable in, in their role in perpetuating these uh, situations of food insecurity, but the communities are saying, you know, enough is enough. We're, we're taking, taking our, our land and our lives back into our control. And that's really what it is. It's, it's about food sovereignty. We hear the word food security a lot, but um, it's, it's about sovereignty. It's, it's con regaining control over the food systems and designing the way that uh, is true and authentic to these communities. Um, and it's a beautiful thing.